Good morning, this is Angela with Parkrose Permaculture. I uh, have to do this intro today from up at my dad's house. I'm up helping him out and I tried to do an intro in my own yard and my neighbors have a lot of construction equipment going and my neighbor across the street was running his weed whacker. So it was impossible to film. So this video will all be voiceover and I wanted to do my intro from up here. So today I wanna to talk about the concept of succession in permaculture planting. I am a big fan of Mark Shepard's book, Restoration Agriculture. If you have not read it, it's a book that I reread frequently when I'm feeling kind of down about things and worried about whether we can actually uh, push ourselves toward resilience. His book is just so, it's so good. He talks a lot about succession and about how we need to get away from annual uh, agricultural production and move into perennial sustainable food production and how actually that is more uh, abundant and more productive in the long run and also easier and good for the planet. So I was thinking about this a lot because I've experienced uh, the action, the manifestation of succession in my own garden as I have taken a barren, depleted landscape of sod and weeds and turned it into a food forest, taken a landscape that had intense pounding, beating sun and a hard clay subsoil where the rain just ran off of it and I got gullies and fissures in my soil because, in my dirt because there was no soil and how I have built it into a sustainable um, system with microclimates and shade and uh, water conservation and the thick humus that holds the water and helps me grow uh, rich, uh, fertile, uh, productive plants in my system. So I just thought I would show you around the small section of my front yard food forest and talk about what succession has looked like there over the years and how moving from annual cropping when uh, the area was intensely sunny and depleted and uh, that was my only option to a system based around perennial food forest agriculture or forest gardening. After sheet mulching my entire front yard lawn, I began growing annual veggies while my perennial trees became established. As I looked at succession in my food forest, I knew that initially my little tiny trees were going to need support and I had tons of sunny open space to grow annuals. Even now, like this spot here, I have sunny patches where I'm able to grow things like pumpkins and summer squash. Many of my perennial fruit producing trees are now mature, like this Oregon curl free peach. They cast a lot of shade onto the ground but that doesn't mean I can't still grow some annuals and a huge diversity of perennial food crops. Most annual food crops that humans grow require full sun and begin to struggle once we have shade. As my fruit trees grew and I had more and more shade, I began to underplant with perennials like this Carolina allspice and June berries and many others that tolerate some shade and do well in a forest system. My front yard food forest has direct southern exposure and parts of it are subject to the bitter east winds in the winter. Pushing toward a closed canopy of mature fruit trees means I have created sheltered microclimates where some of my plants that previously struggled with sunburn and windburn are now protected. My ground cover strawberries and my blueberries no longer have the damage they had early on because succession in the food forest means these plants are protected by the tree crops. Remember that while the food forest may be 12 years old, some of my tree crops are only four and five years old, and there is still quite a bit of sunshine coming into the center of the yard. This area around the pawpaw is one of those places that gets a lot of sun. You can see this young Fijoa here, and a young Juneberry. Both are about five years old and both are slow growing. They will eventually fill in and produce more shade. In the interim, I have planted a 
black locust variety known as purple robe, which is a nitrogen fixing shade producing perennial. It will be cycled out later as my other tree crops grow larger and close the canopy. Self-sowing annuals still proliferate in my front yard food forest, but as the system pushes toward a closed canopy. What you find is that the underplanted perennial support plants, such as roses and yarrow and mint and many others, begin to fill the gaps that the annual crops such as borage and kale and chard once inhabited. For 12 years, I have grown tomatoes in this bed, but a few years ago, I planted a Nikita's gift persimmon and it will slowly take over most of this space. And for now, I can still grow two tomatoes here, but I used to grow six. I'm okay with shifting from annuals in the front yard to perennial food crops. That is the natural order of things. Annuals are generally pioneer plants, and the more we cycle toward perennials, the more we cycle toward sustainability. Food forests truly are perennially based. However, it's important to utilize space while the system matures and keep growing annual veggies. Okie doke, I hope that gave you a good look at the possibilities for perennial food production, how you can uh, succeed in transitioning from primarily annual uh, veggie production into a system of diverse perennial agriculture and how that is good for your garden itself, for your local ecosystem in your yard, how it can be applied to um, any location where we are patient and we work with maturing the system, how that benefits us and it benefits the landscape as well. If you're interested in learning more about sustainable uh, regenerative agriculture, on a commercial scale, on a scale for farmers, not just homesteaders, please read Mark Shepard's book. Uh, it is so good. I'll put a link in the description. Just a great, great book. Uh, I actually am going to be talking a little bit more about Mark Shepard in upcoming videos because he's been such an inspiration to me and has really shaped how I approach uh, agriculture on my one quarter acre plot here in Portland. If you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and please think about subscribing. I have lots more coming out throughout the summer about permaculture, cottage gardening, sustainable food production, duck and beekeeping, chicken keeping, and orcharding. I also have a Patreon. You can check it out below in the description. Supporting this channel helps me make more videos and I really appreciate it. It helps support our family. Thanks.